Uh, th those stimulus checks that went out to a much wider base of Americans, they clearly paid for themselves just in the yes. increase in retail sales. Now, how long that lasts is debatable, but I don't think it should be left off the, the discussion tables here. Um, at, at face value. If you target it, these That's guys would say, point. if you... Exactly, and if you target... So having it in your home means you'll really use it. It's... And that's it. Hi, I'm Jane King, and thank you for watching. This show is all about public, private, and blockchain companies. We bring you the innovators behind the companies, making the headlines in that space. Some are sponsored, some are invited, all are curated and focused on telling you, the viewers, their story. Here we go. Pharmaceuticals just finished a trial of its COVID vaccine on animals. And with me is the CEO of Seth Letterman to explain the findings. So Seth, I took a quick look at these. It looks pretty good. Can you go into detail about what your trial results were with this COVID vaccine? Thanks, Jane. We're very excited. We tested our vaccine on non-human primates in an experiment where we vaccinated the animals with our vaccine versus two controls either a sham vaccine or a vaccine that was closely related but, but wasn't designed to protect against COVID. And in the fourth quarter of last year, we announced very encouraging results about the immune response that these um, non-human primates mounted. But today, we announced that the vaccinated animals were protected against COVID-2. COVID-2 is the virus that causes COVID-19. So uh, the, the top line of the results that was issued today was six days later, which is a relevant time in this animal model, the vaccinated animals uh, had undetectable levels. So and in, in contrast, the animals that were not vaccinated or were vaccinated with a control vaccine had much more. Very interesting. Well, now we now we heard kind of as we've been studying all this, you know, 94% effective. 90, do, do you have a number on that yet, or are you at that point? That's a great question. Unfortunately, we can't get that kind of information from this model because these animals uh, don't get as sick from COVID as humans do. But the, the model that we use is very similar to the models that were used by the EUA vaccines, for example, and all the other vaccines. And uh, we won't have that kind of number until we get into humans, because we have to just look at the amount of virus we can detect instead of looking at how healthy or sick the animals get. Mm -hmm. Now, when we talked last time, um, you had explained a little bit about your goals for this vaccine, that it might be something that it could be used every year. I mean, kind of explain how this would fit into the whole COVID vaccine ecosystem. It's a great question. The three EUA vaccines, EUA stands for emergency use authorization. And I think everyone now knows that they would be the Pfizer vaccine, the um, Moderna vaccine, and the J&J vaccine. Uh, they're all very important. And I first want to say that it's with great effort to get them approved. I personally am one dose into the Pfizer vaccine. I urge everyone to get the vaccine as quickly as they are eligible. Um, to get it in their state or community. 
But um, despite the remarkable achievements of Operation Warp Speed and the potential of these vaccines, they are first generation vaccines. And there are important questions left about these vaccines we just don't know. The most important is durability. How long will someone be protected? So we don't know, will they only be protected for six months, for nine months? I mean, for me, that's a very good trade-off because I want to be protected for six months. But on the other hand, there are older, more established techniques of vaccination that can provide years or decades of protection. So while the EUA vaccines, the Moderna and the Pfizer vaccines are called mRNA vaccines, those are completely novel technology. And the J&J &J vaccine called AD26 is almost as new, although it was half of a vaccine that was used in Africa for Ebola, but essentially, at least with an American experience, new. So we just don't know the durability. One of the great advantages of those vaccines is how quickly they could be developed. And thank goodness, because hopefully they're making an impact already, because so, you know, over 100 million people, I believe, in the United States have gotten their first dose. Mm -hmm. But it's no time to be complacent. We can't get a year from now and realize that the protection from these is only six months. We need other technologies. Also, after the pandemic, we expect COVID to be endemic, meaning that humans are going to coexist with COVID for the rest of the time that humans are on Earth. And that means that like measles, mumps, and rubella, we probably will have to adopt a strategy of vaccinating children against COVID. So we are thinking in terms of that kind of vaccine, ultimately a childhood immunization that could be broadly deployed and tip the balance of this you know, sharing the earth with COVID, tip it in our favor in the same way that the MMR vaccine, the measles, mumps, rubella vaccine, has tipped that balance in our favor. And our technology, in contrast to Pfizer, Moderna, and um, j and which are new technologies, ours is the oldest technology. Literally, the first vaccine was a vaccine to protect against smallpox developed by Edward Jenner, in 1796, we believe that our horse box vector is closely related to the virus that Edward Jenner used. That virus provides years, decades of protection, and it was the most successful vaccine ever because it eradicated smallpox, the only viral disease ever eradicated. So we're taking the best part of the old virus vaccine technology and applying it to this new threat. Mm -hmm. So I think that that's why we're, we're very different. Very interesting. So the vaccine is called TNX 1800, correct? So yeah. what's next? What's next is we hope to uh, study humans this year. And the gating item for that is manufacturing TNX 1800 in a quality suitable for human investigation. So that's our big priority. And now we really feel that's the one hurdle left for us to jump through, uh, particularly now that we have what we think is compelling data in the uh, non-human primate animal model. Mm -hmm. So we are guiding that in the second half, we expect to do human phase one trials. So we're rushing towards that goal. And what are your objectives for 2021? Well, the most important objective as we've discussed is to bring home the Raleigh study, the confirmatory phase three study in fibromyalgia, which with a positive study, uh, you know, a drug ready for NDA, you know, would be transformative to our company. Um, the other thing, uh, the other big thing we're hoping for, again, something we talked about, is to get our COVID-19 vaccine, TNX 1800, into a phase one human study. Okay, well, thank you. Very interesting update, Seth, and best of luck. And please come back and update us as these trials and studies go on throughout the year. Thank you very much for your interest. Thank you.
Hey, Lisa, is a new look at healthcare where it can be one spot where you can get access to all kinds of healthcare professionals, but also work your healthcare finances as well. So with me is the CEO, Ian Parker, uh, to explain um, a little bit more, some updates about it. And um, Ian, great to have you back here. There always seems to be a lot going on with Alexa. So why don't you give me a quick update? Great. Thank you for having us back. So the obviously the rebranding effort has has gone underway. Uh, we recently changed the name to Helixa. Uh, the team has done a, an incredible job um, moving that very quickly. Uh, if the market's reaction is is any gauge to the, the the measurement of of how the name is being accepted out there, uh, our volume has gone up significantly. So I think I think the market has has really enjoyed the name change. Um, you've certainly seen that same thing in the that same response in inside of the actual uh, marketplace for our products so the that's going very well um, in addition to that we have a number of acquisitions that we recently made we'll talk a little bit about that today um, those become very important to us really executing on the overall vision of rolling out these products into the marketplace. Mm -hmm. Now you mentioned the team, so, and you have some people joining the team, so can you explain a little bit more about who they are, what do they bring to Helixa? Sure, uh, and I, I think that the, the, the most important point I would make on that is that we, we put a lot of effort into making sure that we have a complete ecosystem, that we have a virtual care platform, we have the, the, the pharmaceutical delivery, we have the remote patient monitoring that takes your vital signs directly from the camera on your phone. We have the, the social relief, which you mentioned in the beginning, which allows us to find aid for uh, Americans that, that, that need such aid, and especially in these, these, these challenging times. And that completeness of an ecosystem is now starting to attract some, some incredible talent. Some incredible talent. Uh, these are very talented professionals with you know, incredible accomplishments. Um, collectively, they've onboarded more than 75 million lives in the past couple of years uh, into the telehealth, in, into various telehealth platforms. Um, they have scaled companies from five employees to 5,000 employees over the course of approximately six months. They've served honorably in Congress as well. So <clears throat> this is an incredible team of professionals that's starting to join us, and it really allows us to execute on the vision of Calixa. Um, very rapidly here in the near future. And you just acquired a new pharmacy in Texas. So explain how that fits into the whole likes of goals and, and ambitions. Sure. So the, the new pharmacy, uh, that was a five-star pharmacy, uh, that's going to, we're, we're going to be announcing a name change here to Purely Rx. We're changing the name to Purely Rx here shortly. Um, that, that is a, a crucial piece for us because what it allows us to do is now have a, a, um, a base of operations for all pharmacy operations in all 50 states. It becomes our central command, if you will. Um, we have an incredible group of people that'll be running it and it allows us to uh, begin the process of uh, pharmaceutical deliveries within the Dallas area, which we are testing right now. So we're launching the application and now we're doing last mile deliveries for pharmaceutical deliveries inside of uh, the city of Dallas. And then what should we be watching for next in the Helix evolution? Sure, so I think that the, the big things are going to be on the pharmacy side um, in the near future here. We have a number of, uh, a number of other acquisitions that we're working on. Uh, we're currently looking at uh, building out our hub and spoke model throughout the United States. Uh, that's happening very rapidly. Um, we, the, the big part of, of uh, our execution on that is going to be having areas in, in major metropolitan areas like Dallas. So think Atlanta, New York City, Philadelphia, um, Miami, you know, um, LA, San Francisco. So those are the pieces that we're starting to put in place right now. And as we build out that affiliate network, that's going to allow us to take what we're doing in Dallas to the rest of the country. Okay, I mean, you've really done a lot and we talked like just a month ago or so, so there's been a lot of progress since then. Anything you'd like to add before we let you go, Ian? Um, once again, just an incredible team of people that uh, I, uh, I have the, the honor of serving as CEO and uh, they've done an incredible job um, putting this together. When, when you have a, a rebranding effort that started eight weeks ago and has rolled out this quickly, 
there's no one person that can do that. That is a, a, a collective effort, a, a very heavy lift, if you will, and they've done a, an incredible job doing it. Mm, well, great. So um, always exciting to get an update, Ian. I look forward to the next one. Likewise. Thank you. Thank you again. <laughs> Interscope Hearing Technologies has helped tens of thousands of hearing impaired consumers. And with me is the president and CEO of the company, Matthew Moore. So great to have you here, Matthew. Great to be here. Thank you for having me. So I was doing a little research. I didn't realize 48 million Americans have some form of hearing loss. Um, and that's something people should take seriously. So can you talk a little bit about what this could mean if that is left untreated? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, hearing loss, um, it really affects the whole body. There's a lot of health issues that go along with it. Like, for example, it is connected to even dementia and Alzheimer's. That if you, if, you're, if you have hearing loss that's untreated, you're five times more likely to get dementia or Alzheimer's. It's also connected to heart disease, risk of falling, hospitalization, depression, even suicide. I mean, so really untreated hearing loss, a person can actually live three years less compared to someone that has hearing loss, but is using amplification, AKA hearing aids. Um, so, so that is where, you know, hearing loss really needs to be addressed and really needs to make sure that, that people really take care of that when they are, when they realize they actually have the hearing loss. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, that's interesting and it makes sense. I mean, especially kind of the depression about it because it's frustrating. It makes life more difficult just to live when you can't hear and communicate properly. So if there, is such a wide problem. Why are people avoiding getting treatment? Yeah, I mean, it's for a lot of reasons. I mean, you have um, accessibility, you have affordability of hearing devices, you have the, the stigma, the denial, the, um, the vanity issues that go along with wearing um, hearing devices. Um, but, you know, it really comes down to education. People really don't understand that they have hearing loss. Um, so that is where, where we're all about, we're trying to bring access, we're trying to bring knowledge, um, awareness to hearing loss. Because once you bring awareness, Awareness to hearing loss, you know, it's, it's kind of like a breast cancer in the, the, the Susan B. Coleman um, Foundation. You have the uh, um, colon cancer. You have all of these health conditions that's really have awareness over the past decade or so that's really brought a lot of these uh, these conditions more to, you know, more to the surface. And really, people have really started addressing that. And that's what Aeroscope is all about doing is that we're trying to bring awareness to hearing loss, bring awareness that, that if you have hearing loss, you need to get a and you need to make sure that you get it, um, uh, you, that you make sure that you uh, get it fixed, um, you know, and you get it addressed by wearing, by potentially wearing hearing devices or some sort of amplification. You know, we're all about bringing accessibility to the underserved markets um, because, you know, that is where, you know, there's 50, you know, 40 plus million people that have hearing loss that is being untreated. There's over 50 million people in the United States that have hearing loss currently. That's there's less than 10 million people that actually are wearing hearing devices um, uh, today. So it's a huge underserved market that Aeroscope is tapping into um, as of now. Yeah, well, interesting that there was legislation just recently passed that allows for more options, some over-the-counter options where you don't have to go to a professional, and that can be a more cost-effective solution for some people. Absolutely, yeah. That was that was a big, huge advancement over the past uh, couple years. Um, the you know right now, as of now, the the OTC law has not the OTC law has been passed, but it has the FDA due to COVID has delayed the regulations to to, to get them out. So it was actually supposed to be out August of last year, um, but because of COVID, you know the FDA has been really busy, obviously. Totally understandable. So that is where where, where we've uh, you know um, right now there is two classifications: PSAPs, personal sound amplifying products, and um, FTA registered hearing aids. 
Interscope actually has both those. We have PCEPs and FTE registered hearing aids as of now. Um, you know, the OTC over the county hearing aids, those are going to be announced any day now. We're literally going to wake up one morning and the FDA has just announced these, these final guidance, these regulations um, um, that OTC has, uh, has been announced. So that is where that is where we're actually in the process. We have our devices. Um, we have already FTA registered hearing devices right now that we can't that we're selling right now. These are direct to consumer hearing devices that we're able to sell right now. A person does not need to go to see a professional, does not need to see an audiologist to actually get a hearing device. Well, I imagine, I mean, the number is around 40 million now, but we're an aging society. Uh, people are living longer. I would imagine that market would only get bigger. Like, how are you addressing that expectation? Yeah, great question. I mean, we're we're really growing. We have our own e-commerce. We're all we're already um, a wholesaler with Walmart. Um, you know, our products are on Walmart.com right now. We are hooking ourselves up with many many retailers. You know, pretty much every retailer you can think of or big pharmacy you can think of, and even local and regional pharmacies, we're connecting with them right now to offer our products on their websites, um, on their shelves, um, once further clarification of the over-the-counter um, uh, hearing devices become uh, active. Um, but really, you know, which is fantastic news right now is that we actually recently just signed a wholesale arrangement uh, to offer our products with BJ's Wholesale Club. We, this is a brand new thing we've been working on for nearly a year right now, and we've connected with them. Our products are going to be available on their website within a matter of days. And what's the great thing is, is that BJ's Wholesale Club they really understand the, um, the the necessity that that their members. I mean, they have six million members nationwide, and you know they're 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 a Fortune two hundred and fifty company. They're they're you know they're on the stock market, and what this does is that our products are going to be able to help millions of their members. They really understand that that their members need hearing assistance. So it, it is really a it's a great business, but it's also a great humanitarian issue as well. Because, because that is where, you know, you, you, there is millions and millions of people that are walking around with untreated hearing loss today. And, and that is where, you know, our wholesale arrangements, I mean, we're getting more and more each, um, uh, each week, each month. Um, we have so many in the pipeline. And that's where our company is really going to start addressing and helping these, these Americans that suffer from hearing losses because of our distribution path, our wholesale distribution path, as well as our own e-commerce. Yeah. Okay. Well, thank you. And very interesting. Um, I didn't realize all the technology involved in hearing amplification. So um, very, very interesting. Thank you so much, Matthew, for joining us. Thank you for having me. Segura is focused on building an open, decentralized blockchain that ensures transparency. So with me is the Chief Marketing Officer of Bosagora, Johan Lee. Great to have you here from Seoul, South Korea. So it's wonderful. Hey, nice to meet yeah. you. Nice right. to meet you, Jane. And um, I'm very glad to be here. So can you tell me just a background of Bosagora, introduce yourself and what the company does? Sure. Um, I'm Johan, the Director of Marketing and Business Development at Bossagora Project. And Bossagora is a public blockchain platform that aims to make a better world. We are um, kind of creating a whole new financial environment, uh, envir uh, financial environment that is secure and convenient. Uh, we plan to help majority of uh, cryptocurrency traders around the world to make higher profits by investing in traditional financial world, mm -hmm. such as stocks or real estate markets. Um, you know, thank you for having me here, and I'm very pleased to share my story. Yeah, no, it's great. It's great to hear about the company. So, and you explain that you want to create a new financial environment. So you go into a little more detail about that. Sure. Uh, we are literally uh, making new financial environment, a unique financial ecosystem no one has ever experienced before. 
we named this TFI True Finance. Uh, first of all, we offer a very special staking reward rate system. Uh, they, uh, the way to participate is almost the same as conventional blockchain platforms, but the compensation rate is not the same at all. We offer an annual rate of 37%, and it is the minimum rate. Not only that, uh, we of, um, TFI has a unique structure that allows users to earn additional fixed income. Uh, Bosagora has its own currency called BOA. By lending the state BOA coins as collateral, we generate additional profits from the traditional economy. It's kind of you know one source finance, but used in a multiple, multiple ways. And you're lending staked coins, right? Right. Can you can explain a little bit more what that means. Sure. Um, yeah, the participation process is very simple and easy. Um, um, the users can stake block coins on the TFI website and check on the box to agree on lending to the stake coins. And that's it. Super easy, right? TFI, uh, we have TFI Labs, our um, operating company founded in Singapore takes care of all these processes of lending uh, cash, investing in traditional economy, making profits, purchasing block coins from the profits made by investment, and you know paying back participants uh, with the block coins as well. Mm -hmm. The results are uh, of each process are uh, recorded in the blockchain, of course, and managed transparently. Okay, so that was my next question then. How do you uh, ensure that it is transparent and managed on the blockchain correctly? Yeah, yeah, you're such a sharp and smart investor. Yes, I agree with you. Um, and it, it is very risky to invest in products that are not transparent. In order to transparently manage the process outside the world, I mean outside the blockchain, we decided to uh, link our trust contract with a um, blockchain oracle solution called Chainlink. Chainlink is a company that connects blockchain smart contracts to uh, the off-chain outside the world. Chainlink's decentralized oracle network provides reliable and unmodifiable uh, information to smart contracts. Chainlink allows the TFI protocol to be fully trusted and decentralized. Okay, now we've heard, of course, of DeFi or decentralized finance. And you mentioned T Phi. That's the first time I've heard of T Phi. So can you explain the difference between DeFi and T Phi? Yeah, we just made uh, the term for our ecosystem, and uh, T Phi is kind of DeFi, but much easier and safer system. Uh, this di uh, this difference comes from the fact that T Phi is based on the traditional in uh, investment sector. T Phi will generate profits from the traditional economy, like stocks or real estate markets, so users can easily understand the whole process as they are more familiar. Thank you for coming, and let's do an update as you get through you know, through this year and you start to introduce the coin and have more projects on hand. Yeah, yeah, sure, I do. Great, thank you so much. show, I put no barriers between myself and my viewer. I don't use jargon. I never talk QE3. I don't use scripts. I just speak into the camera, tell the story, and we're invested together. Fox Business, invested in you. This